If you use Obsidian the way it was intended to, i.e. without a heavy folder hierarchy structure, by the time you have 100 or 200 nodes, simply having them on your file explorer is not going to cut it. At this point you might want to map your content in some sort of way, and in this video we're going to explore how I map my content using Maps of Content, or MOCs for short. Timestamps are shown here and in the description below. And before I get started, I want to say that this video will probably be the most extensive and subjective video in the series. I'm going to show you exactly how I map my content, but what works for me might not work for you. And secondly, I want to make it clear that I didn't come up with the term MOC or maps of content. I first heard it mentioned by Nick Milo in the Obsidian forums a long time ago. He is a highly valued member of the Obsidian community. He also has his own YouTube channel, which I will link to in the description below. All right, so what are maps of content and why should you care? MOCs are essentially a way to organize and see your notes and their many links as they relate to a certain topic. So for instance, you can have a programming or philosophy or filmmaking MOC, and inside of it, you will have links to different notes that pertain in one way or another to that specific MOC. So now you may be asking, why not just use a folder structure? This is an analogy that I like to use to help others see the benefits of bidirectional linking. In a typical folder structure hierarchy, your notes are connected through the notes they came from, which can be the parent note, and the notes that come after them, which can be called the child note. The problem with this is that families are much more than just parents and children. You also have siblings, cousins, aunts, uncles, and all of that. And in a traditional folder hierarchy system, like the one you'd use in a software like Evernote, those links cannot easily be made. You can't just link a note three levels deep in folder A to a note five levels deep in folder B. It just doesn't work like that. And therefore, a folder structure is a much weaker connection than a link. Let's use an example of a YouTuber that does a bunch of research for his videos, and he uses books, articles, tweets, and all of that. As he's scripting his video, he might realize that some of the insights that he read in a book that wasn't even remotely related to the topic of the video might actually apply here. In a traditional folder hierarchy, he couldn't just link the two because the book he read is all the way into the books folder, most likely, and he's currently working on this YouTube project folder, so the two cannot easily be linked. And the first important takeaway here is that you should carry less about organizing and more about creating. And that's what Obsidian excels at because you can simply link directly to another node no matter where it's located, no matter what organizational structure it's in, and focus on creating. A map of content is a lot more fluid than a folder structure. It changes and it's meant to because as you grow, your thoughts are gonna grow with you and it's perfectly fine and natural to make changes to your MOCs as you see fit. I'm gonna now take you to the screen so we can see all of this in action. All right, so here we are back at our Mastering Obsidian Vault that we've opened up in the beginning of this series. And we're gonna be talking about building maps of content, mocks. And it's not as simple and straightforward as building a folder structure as I'm sure most of you are aware of by now. The two most common reasons that compel users to build a mock is one, that they've just moved from the previous software such as Evernote or Notion into Obsidian, carrying hundreds of notes pertaining to a similar topic and they want to make a mock out of that. And the second reason is if they're already settled in Obsidian and they notice they have a bunch of notes linking to the same topic. Then it makes sense to upgrade that topic to its own mock. Let's start with the first one, which is that you're carrying a bunch of notes from your previous software into Obsidian and you want to make a mock out of them. And to make it easier, I'm going to show you guys how I structure my YouTube channel mock, as I'm sure it's something that we can all relate to and understand. I'm going to be rebuilding my YouTube channel mock, which is probably going to take a couple minutes, so I'm going to fast forward this part of the video. All right, so here you have it. This is extremely similar to the YouTube channel mock on my actual vault. And in fact, if I'm being honest, this might even be a little cleaner. All right, so we're going to start over here at the top. And for now, just disregard the three zeros here. I will get to that in the later parts of this video. But really, all that this is, is a way of going back. So I have this in all my Obsidian pages. So when we're on the preview mode and we click on it, we're supposed to go back a page. And because this is a mock, there's not going to be a page to go back to. And in fact, all my mocks have a home directory over here at the top, which takes me back to my home note. And my home note is essentially the root of my vault. It's where I display all of my mocks and it lets me get a bird's eye view of what I have going on and what needs attention and what doesn't. All right, so going back over here, I like to have a quote here. It miraculously helps my inspiration. I don't know why, I don't know how, but it does. So typically I like to change this up, you know, whenever I feel like it, 
but because I go into this desktop every time I want to work on my videos, I tend to have one, if not two or three quotes here that I picked up on the internet most likely, and they resonated with me. I know it's a little weird and trust me, I have no idea why it works, but the truth is that it does. So anyway, over here, I have a simple to-do list. And if you didn't see when I was speeding this up, the way you build this is by pressing command enter over and over again until you have it. So then you leave it here and you leave some to do. And when you go on preview mode, you can then take it off. I like to have this here. Obsidian has not yet, and I don't think it will replace my to-do list app. I just like to have a nice overview here of what I have going on and what needs attention right away. All right, next up, we have a Kenban view of my videos. This here, I've actually went over it in the episode two of this series, which is all about the plugins. And I use a Kanban board to manage my videos. This is just a nice way of visualizing my videos. So I'll have a Kanban board that is, you know, the various phases of video production. So I'll have idea generation, scripting, editing, publishing, and sometimes a lot more steps in between. And as I work on my video and I'm done with the writing and scripting phase, I'll move it to the video filming phase and then to editing all the way to publish. If you want to check more about this plugin, I'll leave a link somewhere here, which will take you to my Obsidian episode two, which is all about the plugins that I use. All right, so then I have areas of improvement, future possibilities and idea generation. This is all under my desktop, which is kind of the way I like to call my MOCs. So then this is all just small things that apply to my channel, you know, place for my ideas, you know, improve my studio, possible new video structure. And as you might have noticed already, I have YT in front of the title of every note. And yes, this refers to YouTube, but it does serve a bigger purpose than that. And the purpose is that when I'm searching and I type in YT, it's going to search for only YouTube mock related stuff. So if I want to look for video editing, I can just come in YT and it's going to take me straight to the video editing. This seems pointless when you just have, you know, a very small vault like this one. But once you have in the multiple hundreds or even thousands of notes, this can come in quite handy. Because then when you have a mock for another topic, such as programming, you can call it PG at the start. So then the same way we just search for YouTube YT, you can use PG for programming. And I'm just giving you guys examples. And I like to have two and at most three letters that help me search for the different notes inside my different mocks. And in the later parts of this video, I'm going to show you guys how I use non-letter keys, such as comma, period, exclamation point, question mark, to describe different topics on my vault. And I think that's gonna be very handy for many of you. So definitely stick around. So when I moved to Obsidian, I already had my YouTube channel. So I didn't build this from scratch as a lot of topics will be built from scratch as you grow your vault. So if you have a bunch of notes already and you're moving to Obsidian, you can build a mop from the top down, which is what this is called. From the ground up would be that you have no notes and you're building your mock as time goes by. But if you already have all these notes, then it makes sense to have a mock like this. And as, as you see in a second, I'm going to show you guys a way to see if a topic that is getting a lot of interest in your vault should be upgraded to a mock or not. All right, so now let's look at building a mock if you don't yet have the notes. And don't be alarmed. This is actually the best place to be in. You shouldn't rush building a mock and it's something that should come naturally. As you expand your vault, you're going to come to a point when you're gonna hop on your graph view and you're gonna see just a bunch of notes pointing to the same topic. And before you know it, there's a mock idea right there for you. So if we come over here to the graph view and we pretend that we didn't name this YouTube channel mock, you're gonna see in your vault, a bunch of notes like this pointing to the same source. And that's usually a good indication that it might be time to upgrade this certain topic into a mock. If you don't yet have the notes that justify building a mock, then don't worry about it. Simply continue creating and don't worry so much about organizing because that's the beauty of Obsidian. I remember the amount of times that I would come up with a new thing that I wanted to write about and my first thought on my mind was, okay, where is this gonna go? And those days are over because now we have stuff like Obsidian, which helps us linking our notes and lets us focus on creating rather than organizing. So if you don't yet have the notes, Simply continue creating and building stuff. And before you know it, you will have the notes and they will show on your graph view or tags, which we'll cover in a new video. And you, the mocks will come naturally and they'll feel earned. And this is something you'll come to cherish most likely. 
All right, so now let's look at building a home note. And again, this is completely subjective. It's just something that I like to do. I feel that it helps me. Maybe it helps you as well. So the way I build mine is actually very similar to how I build my mocks. I just think of the home as a more macro version of the mock. So it looks something like this, home. And I'm gonna speed this one up as well. All right, so there you have it. This right here is what a typical home directory of mine looks like at any given time. And what you can see here is that it looks similar to an MOC, but let's look more closely. Here you have same thing, maybe quotes if you're into that, same thing with the to-do list. And the difference here, I like to have a highlight of the day. So this highlight is something that I've had in my life for a while. And all it means is that to, every day I come here and I type down what my highlight for the day is. And that essentially is what do I want to accomplish today? And I want to write that in the least amount of words possible, at most one line from here to there. And for some reason that also helps me get going and reach my goals in a more efficient way. So then I divide the home page into work, interests, and side projects. And then I subdivide this into MOCs that I'm working on actively and the ones that are non actively being worked on. Same for interests and side projects. This is because in my home page, I don't want to keep this cluttered. I want to see right away what needs attention and what doesn't. And like I said before, we change and our interests change, our work changes, and I'm not going to delete any of that. So I simply move them from mocks that I'm working on into non-actively working on. So it's sort of like an archive file, or if I've noticed that I'm one day my homepage and on my interests, I noticed that I haven't been on the history MOC in months, I'm gonna downgrade it to non-actively. I want to keep this as simple as possible, and I like to have only the stuff that I'm working on on top and everything else in the bottom. The numbering on the titles here is just a way to have the file explorer show my mocks up on the top. So if you come over here to the file explorer, you can see the first results are all related to my mocks. So then if we come over here to the graph view, we can then see in our home part of the graph, all the mocks that we have attached to it. And obviously, again, this is going to be sort of pointless when you have a very small vault, but you'll come to really appreciate it as your vault grows. Another thing you can do is simply tag your mocks by just doing, by simply doing something like this. You can put on a couple of your mocks and then you can come here to graph view, toggle on tags and search mocks. And then you're going to have another way of seeing your mocks in one place. In the future, I'll be doing a video dedicated to tags and another dedicated to the graph view. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure you're subscribed. All right. So now I'm going to show you guys how I classify different sources of media in my vault for easy searching. And this is something that comes in very handy. All right. So let's say I'm taking notes on an article called 20 reasons why you should use obsidian right away what i like to do is put a colon here on the title that's the way i describe articles in my vault so then when i'm searching and i go command o and i press colon i only have one article here so it's going to show up right there and as you can imagine this comes in very handy the bigger your vault gets i know i've said that plenty of times but it's true so then for tweets i use a dollar sign so if you come here put a dollar sign, some tweet. Now when we're searching again, we can just use the dollar sign and it's going to search only for the tweets. And if you haven't noticed by now, Obsidian search is amazing on its own and doing these extra steps helps it become that much better. So I highly recommend you guys give it some customization because it comes a long way again, once your vault gets bigger and at for people, then this for YouTube videos and this for podcasts. Although really I haven't listened to podcasts in a long, long time. I like to use this for books. So then when you come to your search and you want to search for a book, you just press that and then type in the book title. And you know, obviously for YouTube and tweets, podcasts, people, you get the idea. So these are the keys that I use and I use them primarily because I use a US keyboard and they make sense on it. They might not make sense in your language keyboard if it's not the US. So obviously choose whichever works best for you. A word of caution, and I'm definitely guilty of this myself, is don't try to organize every little thing like you would in a folder structure. 
like I said, I'm guilty of this myself. And old habits die hard, you know? I've spent 10, maybe 11 years on Evernote. It was definitely a big adjustment moving into Obsidian and fight that little urge inside of me, telling me to organize every little thing and before I even make a note, decide which folder it would be going into. But once you get past that hurdle, it becomes very liberating because you can just come into Obsidian and write your creativity away, something you could never do in something like Evernote or Notion. If you take anything from this video it is create first, organize later. Focus on creating and organization in the end will take care of itself. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.